I hope that's our heart, actually. Okay, today, if you can, please turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. This is where we'll start today. And it's actually only one little phrase in that verse that I'm going to call out. But it's a phrase that I think is uh, something we need to understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses, or verse 29. And it says this, But this I say, brethren, the time is short. And I'll stop right there. That's the phrase, the time is short. And there's a lot packed into that little phrase right there, the time is short. And today I'd like to actually focus on time, the the thought or the concept of time, relating to us, relating to God. And that word short, that's actually an interval. It means a short amount of time. So it's not talking height or anything of the sort. The word short means Time, there's not much time left. So, I think everybody's probably heard the phrase, time is money. It's basically, I asked my daughter actually this morning, what does that mean? And she actually got it. I was surprised. I shouldn't be surprised, but you should not waste time. This is the meaning behind the phrase, time is money. You should not waste time because you could be using it to make money. So time is money. The focus is on money. Well, I could be using my time to make some money. That is the wrong emphasis. That phrase is not a good one. It's a worldly phrase. A Christian could say, time is service. That is a better one, service to God specifically. And the emphasis is not on wasting time because you could be serving God rather than making money or doing something else that's empty and vain. It's more spiritually minded. But I was thinking about it, the, the, the aspect of time. Time is short. Time is like money. And if you think about it, it really lines up. I'm going to point out some things real quick. You can spend money, you can spend your time. Spend your time doing something. You can waste your money, you can waste your time. Exactly the same. You can steal others' time, like stealing others' money, somebody else's money, You can purchase long-term investments with your time, just like money. Like a paycheck, you're paid 24 hours of time every morning. So you get a brand new paycheck every morning, 24 hours that you can use however you want. You choose each day how you will spend your time, just like your money. There's so many similarities between it. It's almost as if time is a currency, something that you have in your wallet that you can take out and use however you want every day of your life. You can spend it, you can waste it, you can throw it away, you can use it for eternity, or you can use it for just that day and waste it. And the Bible repeatedly warns us about how short time is. It's all through God's word. And I had a whole bunch of verses, but I'm not going to go through all of them. So many verses talking about that. When we see God's word warn us repeatedly about something, we should take note. I mean, we should take note if it warns us one time. But when we see it over and over and over from beginning to end, warning us about how short time is, we should take note of that. There's a reason behind it. Now, I'm going to read a few scriptures, but before I do, let's pray, and then we'll start. Father God, uh, Lord, help me, um, guide my words, Lord. Uh, I pray, Lord, that this would be a, a, a sermon that glorifies you, Lord, one that encourages the hearts of the people here, and Lord, that convicts us. Lord, there are things we can do better. There are things that we, we may not have right in our life. And Father, I just pray you'd guide my words to encourage the people and exhort the people here. And, Father, that you would just lead me through it, because I can't do it, Lord. I am small, I'm weak, um, and I know I need you. So, Father, guide everything today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's turn to Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. I'm going to go through a couple verses here, just to demonstrate. Job chapter 14, verse 1. 
It says, Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Did you notice everything about those verses is about how short mankind is, how their life is just fleeting. It's cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. He's here and he's gone. The next one, Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 12. You don't have to turn there. I'll go ahead and read this one. It says, For who knoweth what is good for man in this life? All the days of his vain life which he spendeth as a shadow. For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? And it's that thought, spendeth as a shadow. The previous verse we just read says, He fleeth also as a shadow. Our life is compared to a shadow that appears and is gone. It's just fleeting. James 4, 14 says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. We're here for only a moment. And you've all seen vapors and steam coming off a, a stove, how it, you see it and then it's gone. See it and it's gone. Our life is that fast. It is so fast and I was thinking about this. You know, babies, infants, they have no concept of time. They just want what they want when they want it. Small children don't even really understand time. And I remember myself as a child being so bored, constantly bored. I don't know why, but I was constantly bored. The days were so long. There wasn't enough friends to play with, enough games to play with, toys to play with. I remember that. As a child, it seemed that way. And I think as children become teenagers, they start to realize, I have too much to do in the time I have. Start getting schoolwork, starting to prepare for college, maybe jobs, different things they have to do. They start to realize time is important, figuring out what you're going to do with your time. And then you pass into adulthood, and you realize, where's the, time's go where's the time going? I mean, my years, my days, my weeks, they're passing by faster and faster as the older I get. I can't do enough things that I need to get done in the time I have. And it's interesting, the perspective change. And there's an aspect of that I want to talk about. But often younger people just don't get it. They don't understand how a person reaches 50, 60, 70, 80, and thinks, where did the time go? They just don't get that aspect of it. To me, it was just yesterday I was in high school. I can remember it like it was yesterday. Just yesterday, I was a young person running around outside. Now I don't run. I should, but I don't. <laughs> but it was just yesterday I was. And time, it's interesting how you get older and you look back, it's like, where did the days go? Time goes so fast. One famous preacher, when he was a very old age, he said, if someone had told me when I was 20 years old that life was very short and would pass just like that, I wouldn't have believed it. And if I tell you that, you don't believe it either. I cannot get young people to understand how brief life is, how quickly it passes. Time is valuable. It is like a currency. It's like money, but far more precious than money. And time should not be wasted. That's really the key of it. Once it's spent, once you spend time, you'll never get that time back. It's one use, and it's gone. For me, just as an illustration, I have a regret in my life. A portion of my life was wasted. After high school, I walked away from God. And for 17 years, I wasted my life. Knowing... knowing what I should have done. I have a regret, and it brings me to tears when I think of it. That's time I'll never get back. Time I could have used for God. Time I could have served God. Who knows what God would have done with my life. That waste of time is a regret I'll have till I die. 
Now, I realize the value of time that I wasted. I didn't realize it at the time. 17 years, I could have been sharing the gospel. 17 years, I could have been singing for the Lord. 17 years, I could have been going door to door, trying to encourage people at a church, doing something. And there's so many Christians that go to church. They sit in church, and they never do anything for God. Their life is their life, and God can't have any. I wonder personally what Jesus is going to say to me someday. But there's hope. Every person can surrender and give their time to God now. And that's my hope. To offer myself to Lord, to give my time, pay my currency and time to God. So I'd like to talk about time today. The value of our time is the first point I want to make. Now, God created time. Time is not something that God is subject to. He submits to. God created it. And that's an interesting concept. It's a fun concept to think about. Our God is a wonderful God, far above us, wonderful God. He created the day in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 5, it says, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. That was the establishment of day and night. We know creation was the establishment of everything that is. That was the first day when he created day and night. He created the seasons. He created the ages. He created how the world operates in the patterns of time and how everything progresses. And we see in Exodus 20, verse 11, it says, it gives the outline for the six-day work week and the seventh day of rest. God gives the outline for the seven days of the week. God created time and the progression of time. He created us. We're little creations that are subject to time. We can't live outside of it. We can't go contrary to time. I can't live backwards in time. I can't do anything like that. We also have an expiration date. There will be a, die, a day that we die, a day that we're done here. We live day, hour, and minute. And we have a beginning and an ending. And it's an interesting concept that God doesn't. He is and always will be and always was. He created time. So for us, subject to time, it's valuable. It should be very valuable. We should look at it as very valuable. And that seems like an often or an obvious statement, but I think we often forget that, that time is so valuable. Time is one of the most precious things we have in this world. Many people think, well, it's money. It's my retirement home. It's my retirement fund, my 401k, or this or that. Time really is the one that is one of the most precious to us, or should be. And I'm not sure we really get it. I'm not sure I really get it. But the Bible talks about that. We need to ask God to teach us the value. In Psalm chapter 90, verse 12. Please turn to Psalm 90, verse 12. Psalm chapter 90, verse 12. It says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. That's saying, this right here says they don't know to number their days. It's saying, Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts. There's another one, Psalm 39, verse 4. Please turn to Psalm 39, verse 4. I think we often neglect to number our days, to really take note of time and how precious it, precious it is to us. Psalm 39, verse 4 says, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Selah. 
Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He, peep, he heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. You see that how, and the measure of my days, in verse 4, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days. He's asking to understand time, to understand how long his life is, to understand how frail he is. And I think that's something we really need to ask. We need to ask God, Lord, show me the truth of this. We neglect to understand, and we waste so much time in our lives. But we have the, I mean, the Bible tells us that he's asking for, to know the measure of his days, how long he's going to live, to understand time a little bit more. And honestly, a lot of people, they don't like to look at the hard things in life. And one of the hard things in life is death. I mean, that's one of the things. A lot of people like avoiding that topic. But it's something we all have to face at some point. But if you ignore it, you don't understand that there's a deadline you're coming to. There's only so much time you have and you're running out of it. Tozer wrote, A.W. Tozer, he said, when you kill time... Remember that it has no resurrection. So when you waste it, it's done. It's gone. You've wasted it. You'll never get it back. You know, there is value in time in this. And I, I listed a few things. God gives us time to repent and to be saved. That's one of the values of time. To repent and be saved. And that's a, a verse. I know some of the men are, are memorizing this. Acts twenty twenty one. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. That's salvation. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. We have time to do that. He gives us time. God gives us time and opportunity to understand salvation. We're sinners. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We are sinners. Every person is a sinner. God gives us the time and opportunity to understand we're a sinner. He gives us the opportunity and the time to understand we will be judged. It's appointed unto man wants to die, and then the judgment so we're guilty, we're going to go to a judgment where we will be found guilty. And he also gives us the time to realize that we need a Savior. Titus 3, 5 through 7 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, not by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We need a Savior. Time is that chance to learn we need a Savior. And who's that Savior? Jesus. I have to say his name. I have to say who it is. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Jesus is that Savior, the sacrifice for our sins, the Lamb of God, God the Son. God gives us time, each person time, to understand that. That's one of the values of time right there. And I would say, and I, I have to add this, if you're here today and doubt your salvation, God has given you this day to figure it out. That's the truth of it. If you're sitting here and there's doubt in your mind about your salvation... He's given you today. He's blessed you. The Bible says even our breath is a gift from God. That we wake up in the morning that we have breath. And God has given you time, currency today, to understand how to be saved for sure. Not to doubt it, not to question it, but to understand what the Bible says completely. And I would say, get it settled today. There's so much going on. And actually, I'll go to that in this next point here. But the value of time. The next point I'd like to make is the waning of our time. It's basically the running out of our time. Our time is running out. We just had a First Friday Fellowship this last Friday night and discussing the things that are happening in this world right now. It was focused on Bible prophecy. And there is a lot going on. And 
it should give us pause as Christians when we see all the different things that are lining up according to God's word. And it's indications of the end of this age and hopefully the soon return of Jesus. There will be a point where the rapture happens, where the Christians are taken out of this world and go to meet the Lord in the air. And it's not only that the Lord's return is on the horizon, it's that our lives are temporary. We live for only a short time. That's what those verses were saying. We're frail, we're as a shadow, we're a vapor that comes and passes away. We never know the moment we'll die. We don't. And there's all kinds of weird stories about there how people die in weird ways, getting heat, hit by a meteor, standing by their house, get hit by a meteor and die out of no... I mean, there's weird stories like that. It can happen at any moment. And often we forget that. We just wake up, go about our lives, go to bed, wake up, go about our lives, go to bed. And we forget about the importance of the time we have. We only have a short time here. We are frail. Psalm 39.4, as I read... Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Do we know that we're frail? Do we know that we're easily broken and we easily pass on? Do we understand that? I think it's a good thing to understand because once you understand how frail you are, you understand the value of what your time is, that currency you have, and how to spend it. And Here's some things. Uh, time is running out for us on a number of things. Our spiritual lives. Think about this. We have a short time here to grow in our knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verses that talk about growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have time to memorize here, but we don't. We have time to pray, but we don't. We have time to be at church, but we choose not to. We have time to focus on seeking God, but we choose to seek our own things. So often that's the case with each one of those. We choose the worldly, the vain, the empty, the passing versus the eternal. So little time, we're running out of time to grow in our knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're saved, there'll be a day that you meet him. Praise the Lord. Only by his grace and his mercy. But we're to grow in our knowledge. We're to be more like Christ. We're to understand his word and use it and retain it. That's the life we should live. We're running out of time also with our families. Here's another one. To raise our children right. Our children are adults before you know it. They are, I, I say it because of my daughters. I can't even believe they're as old as they are now. It's weird to me because I remember, I'm not, hopefully I don't embarrass her. I remember Isabel, we had her in little angel wings as a toddler took a picture of her, and she was adorable. That's how I remember her. But they're grown women now. And they're adults before you know it. It's just, it's gone. And you only have so much time to ingrain those principles, the biblical principles that you read in God's word. You only have so much time to share that with your children. And children watch their parents. They may seem like they don't watch they may seem like you say something to them and they ignore you. But I can tell you as a kid, my dad would say things. I'd act like I ignored him, but I heard what he said. And he just kind of filed it away. Kids watch their, their parents. Children watch their parents. If they see halfway Christians as parents that aren't serious about God, they will reject your faith later on. They will walk away. It seems to be the way it is. If you have some area where you pull away, where you're quite not right, they usually magnify that, and they'll usually go further that direction. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it tends to be. So we're running out of time to raise our children the right way. So many people also spend their lives working. That's the focus in their families. They spend their life working rather than their children, rather than their husband or wife. They trade one for the other. And they don't realize the importance of that time that they gave up. They give their children's childhood to other adults who turn their children from God. That's what often happens. To a child, seeing parents focused on work rather than God 
shows what's more important to their parents. What is most important to you? Time is running out for our children. Do you want them to see how a godly parent lives? Do you want them to be saved? There's another one. A lot of kids will grow up in a Christian home. They know all the truths, but they see a parent that's only halfway interested, and then they walk away. Do they ever get saved, or do they reject God completely? Are parents, Christian parents, driving away their children? Now is the time, and I say this because of the importance of time, now is the time to get serious with God. It is the time. Especially if you're a parent, a husband, a wife. This is the time to get serious with God and spend your time, that currency that, that's so important, on God. Not on all these other things to show the people around you that you care about all these other things. And I talk family, not the friends and other people that are watching. But family, show them what's important. It should be God. And then we're running out of time for our service. Our service, and I'm talking specifically to God, opportunities to do something for God. This is what I regret. I missed so many opportunities, so many opportunities to encourage other Christians, so many opportunities to obey God, so many opportunities to share the gospel with the lost. How many people did I miss that I could have shared the gospel with? So many opportunities to glorify God, to have the privilege, the opportunity to lift up God in front of the lost people or other Christians in this world, to tell them how wonderful he is. Are we missing that opportunity? A Christian ought to jump at the opportunity to glorify God. Jump at the opportunity to serve God because that's our heart. He did so much for us. How can we not do something for him? We want to return that love that he's shown us. And then opportunities to spread the gospel specifically. Why are we here? I mean, what is our purpose for being here? I would say it's not to plan a retirement for ourselves. That's not our, supposed to be the focus of our life. I've got to have this retirement in this home and this lake with these boats. That's not why we're here as Christians. It's not to collect to toys or entertain ourselves with different things in this world. We're here specifically to share the gospel. We're to share it to the next generation. The next generation needs to hear it. It's not to work for worldly gain, which many Christians, they focus on. It's the things of this world. What can I do to have a comfortable life in this world? What can I do to to give my children a comfortable life in this world? We're not called to a comfortable life. The Bible actually says we're going to suffer. We're going to endure persecution. And actually, the previous generations, the, the martyrs, They didn't even have homes often. They had to wander through the woods because they chose God over easy comforts in this life. That's not the world we live in right now. We're here to work for Christ's sake. That that phrase, for Christ's sake, that should be our hearts. For Christ's sake. I'll do whatever I can for Christ's sake. Are we spending that currency of our time on things of value? Are we wasting it? And that's really a question. Are we wasting our time? What are we spending it on? Time is running out. Time is short. And then lastly, the focus of our time. What should our focus be? Really, I mean, what is the focus of our time? I've said it shouldn't be on retirement and all these other things, but what should it be? So let me give, give a few things here. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. Romans chapter 13, verse 11, 12 It says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. We're to wake up. A lot of us, we may not be sleeping, but we're certainly distracted. Going our own direction, doing our own thing for our own purposes trying to further what we feel is comfortable for our lives. We need to wake up. There are people everywhere dying and going to hell. And that should affect us as Christians. We should have mercy in our hearts. We should have some thought of care for those people, desire to share the gospel. We need to wake up, first of all. 
And we need to spend the time doing the will of God. That's a great use of that money, that currency, using it for God, saying, I'm not going to take the time, the currency of time, and use it for myself, but giving it to God. Just like our actual money, just like our actual possessions, giving God our time. 1 John 2, 17 says, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. What is God's will? This is a simple question. What is God's will for every person? To obey him. You obey him in what you know right now. What he has told you to do is what we do. That is doing God's will. That's also showing God love. And then using our time wisely, not just wasting it. Ephesians 5, and please turn to Ephesians 5, verse 15. Ephesians 5, 15. Ephesians 5, 15. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. What does redeeming the time mean? I actually like how Wesley uh, explained it. He said this, Saving all you can for the best purposes. Buying every possible moment out of the hands of sin and Satan. Out of the hands of sloth, ease, pleasure, worldly business. The more diligently, because the present are the evil days. Days of the grossest ignorance, immorality, and profaneness. It says, saving all you can for the best purposes. Buying every possible moment out of the hands of sin and Satan. That's redeeming the time. Using it wisely. Using it for God, I'd say. It's for drawing our families. This is what our, another focus we should have. Drawing our families closer to God. Not focusing on work. Not focusing on the pleasures of this life. The easy things, the fun things, the toys we can have. Proverbs 22 6, 6, uh, says, Train up your child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go, and he, when he is old, he will not depart from it. We're to train our children, drawing our families closer to God. As a husband, you're supposed to try to encourage your wife to draw closer to the Lord. As a wife, you're to try to draw your husband closer to God. You're to work together as a pair. And I brought this up in the prayer meeting before. I, I thought it was a really neat list. And... I want to give this list. A.W. Tozer, he had some questions that he developed to identify our hearts, to identify our hearts and the focus of our time. And I'm going to ask these, give these seven points. They're basically seven questions that are for each person to ask themselves, not to ask about somebody else. But so answer this within your heart, truthfully, because it, it does clarify where your heart is and where your focus is. So here's the first one. What do we want most? What do we want most? What comes to mind with each person? What do we want most? What do we think about most? What do we think about most? How do we use our money? What do we do with our leisure time? There's a huge one. How do we spend our extra time? What company do we enjoy? Who do we enjoy being around? Who and what do we admire? What do we look up to? And here's the last one. What do we laugh at? I think those are really good questions. They get to the heart. It identifies our heart. What do we want most? What do we think about most? How do we use our money? What do we do with our leisure time? What company do we enjoy? Who and what do we admire? And what do we laugh at? It's something for each person to kind of go, where am I at? You know, the two are connected. Where your heart is will be where you spend your time. And the Bible actually says that in Matthew chapter 6, 19 through 21. 
It says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where our heart is, is where we're going to spend our time and what we're going to, we're going to focus on. If, we, if our focus is God, if our heart is for God, we will spend our time for God. That's what it is. That's what it comes down to. And I'd say it's an empty life that wastes all their time on themselves. If your life is spent focusing your time on yourself, that's vanity. That's empty. That's worthless. And it will come to nothing eventually. We have a wonderful God. An absolutely wonderful God. He deserves our time. He deserves our focus. He deserves our worship, our praise. He deserves our obedience. He deserves the words that come out of our mouth. Have you ever thought every day you wake up and it's an opportunity to actually praise God again? In that day, you have the opportunity to praise God for something he's done, to tell somebody else how wonderful he is, to share something with somebody, and you can say, this day, I glorify God in some sort of way. But when you get past the day and you don't do anything for God, wasn't that day completely wasted? It, completely wasted. I mean, there's things you got to do to live. But when it comes down to it, what really matters is the, is the eternal, what we're doing for God. Now, I had Psalm 103, and there's a bunch here, and I don't want to go too long. Psalm 103, 1 through 16, wonderful passage if you get a chance to read it. It talks about God the Father pitying us as his children, those that fear God. Wonderful passage. When you read Psalm 103, how can you not have a heart that burns for God? Psalm 103 is such a, a tender, intimate passage about how God loves us and cares for those that fear him. If we have that fire, why don't we focus on God more? Why don't we spend more of our time on God? It's a question. And I think it's, and the reason I'm presenting this is I think it's a question we have to ask ourselves. We're, I believe, we're at the end of the age. It looks that way in many different ways. I don't know the time nor the day the Lord's going to return. But we, we look around and we see a lot of things happening that haven't happened before. The world is changing very quickly. Things are happening very fast. We're losing a lot of the freedoms we used to have. And the United States, honestly, is declining very quickly. We're in a weird time. So how are we spending the time we have? How will we spend the time we have left? Knowing the goodness of God and realizing the value of time, can't we here make a conscious decision to give him more of our most precious resource? Can't we go, Lord, I haven't given you the time you deserve. I want to, and I'm choosing to do it now. I choose this day to give you more of my time. However it is, there's many things you can do for the Lord. Spend more time in your Bible. Spend more time praying. Spend more time memorizing. Spend more time sharing the gospel. Spend more time serving here at the church, trying to help out however you can. Can't we make that decision? I know many of us know we should, and we even think to ourselves, I'd like to, but we never take the first step. We don't actually go and offer ourselves. We don't actually go and do it. It's actually giving our time. Spurgeon wrote this, and I'm almost done here. Spurgeon wrote this to his, con he actually said this to his congregation. And I think it's pretty sharp. He said, how many of you have responded to God's appeal? My son, give me thine heart. And you answered, I will. But to this day, you have never fulfilled your word. God has said, go work in my vineyard. And you promptly replied, I'll go, Lord. Yet you have never gone. Today, as before, you stand idling. Some of you, indeed, were in a better spiritual condition 30 or 40 years ago than you are at present. What account can you give of yourselves? What has become of those intervening years? 
The infinite mercy of God has kept you out of hell, but there is no guarantee that his long suffering will shield you from destruction another instant. O oh, sirs, the time is short, the business urgent, the crisis imminent. Tis madness to be halting between two opinions. If God be God, serve him. And if not, take the alternative and serve Baal. That's a sharp, sharp statement. How many talk? You know, actually, the Bible says it warns about being doers and not just hearers. We're to be doers. We hear God's word and then we do it. But I think it might be one step worse than that today. Christians hear and they will even say, but they don't obey. So I'd ask, are we sayers and not obeyers? Do we say we're going to do it? And we just don't. Have we said to God in the past, we'll do it? And we just don't. It goes back to Ephesians 5, 15 to 16. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Do we fit in this passage too? Psalm 145, 10 through 12, it says, All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of thy glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Is that how we talk? Is that what we do with our lives? And thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. That's a good way to use time. When we fellowship together, what do we focus on? And remember this right at the end here. The Lord's watching. He ponders the heart. Malachi 3.15 talks about a book of remembrance that was written for those that spake often one to another and the Lord listened to them and wrote their names in a book of remembrance. What is the focus of our time? And that's where it is today. How have we spent it? How are we choosing to spend it? I, going back to me, I wasted years and I regret it. But I have the opportunity myself to choose to spend my time serving God in the future. We each have that opportunity. We can look back and go, I wasted so much time. Forgive me, Lord. But our Lord is merciful and forgives. And he will allow you to serve now. To start now. We have that opportunity and there's not much time left. Time is short. Are we using our time wisely? Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, Oh, Lord, help us. Help us know the value of time. Teach us, Lord, the value of our days, how we're frail. Lord, so often we ignore it or just don't think about it, and we waste our days, our time, our hours. Lord, help us understand and realize and put some significance on spending our time for you, living our lives for you, not wasting the days and the hours, but, Lord, focusing on you because you deserve it. You're wonderful, God. Father, help us have the right hearts with you. Be the diligent servants that you deserve. And Lord, help us look at ourselves, look at our hearts, and assess where we are. Because Lord, that's what's important. Not what others are doing, but Lord, where are we with you? Lord, we need to be submitted. We need to be serving. So Lord, help us now. In Jesus' name I pray. With your heads bowed and eyes.